But let's see a little uh, uh, look back at the first quarter of uh, 24. I see I used the, the old format, excuse me for that. Uh, next time I will use the new RAMI. But let's see uh, uh, a few numbers of the flights. And we start with flights, so don't look at, uh, at this as passenger numbers, but just flights. In total we had 3.3% more flights at the airport. And what is very significant is the rise in international flights. And this is in line with what uh, Miles and Vrushka told us. We did invest a lot of energy in new areas, and we did see a lot of new flights. But you will see that this number, and this rise in number of flights, is much higher than the rise in number of passengers. In the next slide. But we did see 17.3% 70, 17 more international flights mainly from North America. Uh, of course, it was uh, caused by the start of WestJet from Toronto, but also a lot of extra frequencies by Delta and United. Um, we saw the 20% drop in flights from TUI, from Europe, so we see a reduction in the number of flights in the Dutch market. Um, but very important to say that that number is, of course, influenced by the division of uh, seats between the islands. Most of the Dutch flights fly the triangle via, via Curaçao, for example, um, and airlines can adjust that uh, number of seats for Curaçao or for Bonaire. So that's uh, a remark very important. And lastly, we see uh, a stable number of flights between the islands. Of course, that's not enough. We want more flights between the islands. The current local carriers are doing a great job, but we see that there's more demand and that's not enough capacity at the moment. So I will say you a little bit more about that in my outlook. So this is the number of flights. Now look at the passenger numbers. <coughs> Here we see a little different uh, picture. We had a, a very healthy rise in passengers, 6.8%. Still not enough to fill all of the, the rooms, but still, for an airport, it's a nice, healthy rise. And it's more or less divided between international and inter-island. So we saw 7.8% more international passengers, which is less than the number of flights. So that means that the load factor, especially from North America, is a little bit lower. So, yes, we need more airlift, but there are free seats. There are free seats. So that means that people need some help to find the island. They have to sell Bonaire abroad. Um, but still, a rise in of 7.8% uh, is pretty healthy, and it's in line with the strategic tourism plan in order to focus on high-yield tourism from North America. Um, because it was caused, of course, by the South of Westjet and the extra frequencies of Delta and United. The Dutch market is more or less stable. We see a, um, uh, a drop in the number of passengers from KLM. The TUI, on the other hand, is keeping up with the numbers from 23. So, it's kind of stable. Um, and of course, if you see differences between my numbers and those of TCB, this little um, disclaimer is explaining everything. Um, I'm telling you about passengers, that's more or less everybody on the plane. Miles and, and, and you, Pushka, you're looking at visitors, so that's a little bit different. Um, well, when you started mid-23, so that's mainly the reason that inter-island traffic is up with 4.3%. Uh, Z-Air and DP are very stable and developing slowly. Um, and I told you about the US market and the Dutch market. 